Hey, my friends, welcome back to Guns Up Review. Today we got, well, we got some table art, some uh, wall hangers, some display demilled Bren Mark II uh, British light machine gun. Whole box of magazines in 303. Come on back, I can't wait to show you this thing. All right, so what do we have here today with us? We have, I picked this up, I got this at an estate sale. It was kind of an accidental thing, but I am a fan of guns pretty much that, uh, that changed the course of history, specifically from World War II. I'm very interested in World War II guns. I have lots of uh, American guns, the M1 Garand, the 03 Springfield, M1 Carbine, uh, 1911s, lots of pistols. Anyway, I didn't have anything from British, but I picked this up on accident. <laughs> it was in a lot of things. I didn't know it was in there. I got home and what a surprise. So this obviously is demilled. It is torch cut heavily across the receiver here, here, and here at the rear. Now it is just stuck back together. You see some, uh, some uh, hardware store special U-bolts here that's that's holding it back together right now, okay? So why would you want something like this? Well, number one, right now, this is purely, this is ATF demilled specs. Uh, this is just for display only. Now, at some point in the future, we may put this back together and put a semi-automatic kit on it. So you can put a semi-automatic um, bolt, uh, uh, part in there and make this a legal gun to go shoot. What does it shoot? Uh, this gun shoots the British 303. Now this is the British 303. This is what the Americans were using. This is a, a clip for an M1 Garand uh, and this is 30-06. And the 30-06 is about oh 10% longer uh, than the 303. The 303 is a rimmed cartridge. Okay which caused a little bit of problems. Number one, it's, it's a little easier to eject with the rim on there. So that, that's a nice thing about that. Uh, I also happen to have some uh, original ammo pouches. And so this is how the 303 would have come in these ammo pouches. Uh, and I'll show you how that how these work. They have a little, um, a little tab on them, a little metal clip that you fold out. And then these come in these kind of little stripper clips here um, that they could then load into the magazines. Now, one of the cool thing about this, this particular um, <laughs> acquisition, I guess you could say, was I got, check this out, an original entire case of, of 303 uh, box magazines. So this has, this, this would have been the whole kit that they had in the field. Uh, this shoots 120 rounds a minute. Okay, now these magazines hold 30 rounds each, so that's every every minute you could shoot with a with a magazine change, and they were really quick at, with practice days. Uh, you know, four four magazines a minute, um, and you have to you could shoot this really rapidly. Now the gun would heat up. The nice thing about this gun, what made it special, was that it had a quick change barrel on it. Okay, so you could. You could rotate a, a, a lever up here and remove the whole barrel, and you could change that out. And the barrel, uh, they recommended that you change the barrel if you're under heavy fire every 10 magazines. So let's say that we've overheated our barrel. We want to take this off. Let me show you how that comes off. Now, keep in mind, this is very heavily demilled. My parts don't fit together like they're supposed to, okay? But there's a little button on the back side of this handle. You push that, that flips this, the barrel locking nut up, and then the manual says just grab the handle and pull forward. Okay, so mine you don't just pull forward, but let's just see if I can get it out here at all. <laughs> ah, ah, there you go. And so it just slides off. So once you're, you can see the, the lugs on the back of the barrel at a quarter turn, gets this free, and then the front, uh, your gas tube just slides back on your gas port there. 
and you can change your barrel out that easy. Now again, mine's been heavily demilled and <laughs> doesn't go together like, like she used to back in 1945. The thing you got to make sure is you line up this little lug right here in the, in the front. Let's see here. Uh-oh, let's take that off. Ah, click. That was satisfying, wasn't it? And then your barrel lock lug back down. Mag back in. <laughs> Ready to rock and roll with another fresh mag. Uh, I'm probably not going to be a good barrel man. Put me on the trigger. Now, the, the soldiers obviously were not trained to just do mag dumps as fast as you can. That's a complete waste of ammunition. So uh, this does have a selector on it here. And the selector will allow you to go to from uh, you know semi-automatic to full automatic to safe. Um, and they were trained to shoot in semi-automatic so that the, the enemy didn't know uh, that you had a full automatic weapon in your, in your nest there. And so uh, when they, 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 it sounds like a semi-automatic, so they charge. And with a flip of a switch, now you're full automatic. Um, this particular, this is, like I said, this is the Mark II. The Mark I is a little bit different. You can tell the Mark I's because they have a drum sight adjustment right here on the side. The Mark II just has this micrometer uh, dial um, sight on it. And uh, other than that, that they made the Mark II was kind of a uh, a way to produce these faster. They had about thirty thousand of these, right? And they were in France doing their initial expeditionary uh, missions to go in and see, you know, where the Germans were. Well, they, they, the the British got whipped and basically got pushed back to Dunkirk and had to evacuate. If you've seen the movie, uh, then you know what happened there, but. They were forced to evacuate. They were pinched back, and they had to leave all their small arms and everything behind. They had to flee. Um, that was, this was before the Americans joined the the, uh, the war. And when they fled, they had about 30,000 of these. They made it home with about 2,300 of these. So they left over 27,000 of these weapons, the Mark I, behind. And they said, hey, we got to start producing these things like tomorrow because we just got it handed to us. We lost all our, our light machine guns. We don't have any more left. And so uh, they also said, hey, you know, if, if, the, if the factory in, in uh, the Lee Enfield factory there in, in England, if it gets, or in London, in uh, Brit Britain, gets hit, what do we do? So they outsourced a bunch of these actually to Canada. And Canada started producing them for their use, for India, for uh, the British, uh, you know, a number of, of uh, different customers there. Uh, the, the company in Canada was the John Inglis, uh, I-N-G-L-I-S, Inglis um, uh, Arms Company. And this one is an Inglis. This was a 1945 production date, uh, and, but this, is a, this one was produced in Canada. Uh, this one, again, is in 303 British. But they produced these even up to, uh, they did them in 792 Mauser, and I believe, and they also converted them over to shoot the NATO round, the uh, 762 by 51, our, our 308 round, uh, uh, later on. But these were, these were in some form of production till, uh, you know, 20 years ago. And so uh, these are uh, very, this was a very, very uh, good weapon. Uh, and probably what they say, what the, 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 you know, the experts say, the best light machine gun of uh, World War II, okay? Now this, this eject cartridge is out the side, at the bottom of it uh, as, as the spent cartridge came out of it. And um, like I said, 120 rounds a minute. Um, the English company Canada made about 186,000 of these and so, there's lots of them. So anyway, there's your tiny little history. And there's lots and lots of history on this, uh, you know, out there available for you. Um, so <laughs> what do you do with something like this, you know? There, there's not much you can do with this unless you re-weld this and do a semi-automatic to be, to be legal. This is not 
This is not, not, not legal to put back to a full automatic weapon. Uh, this is a non-transferable uh, gun. The only way to, to put this, to make this legal is to use it as a uh, semi-automatic weapon. So anyway, it, it's, I just, I want to show you, I think it's really cool that I got an original, uh, you know, box of original magazines that go with this that, that would have been issued out in the field. So it's in really good shape. The felt around it, uh, really good. This is, this is a Mark one box. So this box, uh, they, they stopped making those in like 1938 to, to somewhere between 38 and 40. So, you know, this is coming up on a hundred years old. Uh, and the rifle, my rifle is uh, 1945. I'll show you kind of some uh, walk around here at the very end of the video. But anyway, um, neat, neat weapon for me right now, at least uh, cool display item, but I wanted to share it with you. Tell me what you think, what would you do with it? Uh, and uh, I appreciate you watching. So, well, obviously we can't go to the range and shoot this one. This is a, this is a, a, a wall, what we call a wall hanger only. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you here next time on Guns Up Review.